Howdy folks, it's Ajo the Hunting Gear Guy, and this is the Savage A22. This is their 22LR version of their new series of uh, semi-automatic rifles. Uh, this one is magazine-fed with a rotary magazine on the bottom, and it's got a couple of interesting features built into it. Nice, smooth cycling on it. Uh, easy to disassemble to pull the bolt out. The trigger is uh, is pretty good. So there's a lot of things in this rifle that uh, that are very interesting. The other thing I really like is that it's very adult sized. It's uh, it's very comfortable to shoot as an adult. I find a lot of uh, 22s are, are kind of small or diminutive. Um, so a lot of really cool things that I think they did right on this rifle and uh, uh, very interesting. So uh, before we get too far, let's just make sure that we're empty. I can see that my magazine's empty and the chamber's empty. So why don't we take a closer look at this thing? Now, starting at the rear, we just have a plastic butt plate here. That's fine. Doesn't really matter. You don't need a, a fancy rubber one on here. It doesn't really matter. Then, you know, the nice thing about plastic is that it doesn't snag on your shirt at all like rubber will. The rubber will grab a little bit more on a shirt, uh, whereas this won't, which can be a good thing. Um, really nothing special to say about the stock. It's, it's a, an inexpensive stock. Uh, it's got some finger grooves kind of, uh, kind of in there with a little bit of like a tiny little bit of grip on there, but not really a lot. And, uh, that's, that could be okay. Uh, we've got this, uh, plastic dust cover on the back here. This is very AK-ish and how it pops off. Very interesting. Uh, going into the controls on here, we've got, uh, one of their Accu Trigger style triggers. It's a little bit weird, um, and I'll show you that in just a minute here. We've got a cross bolt safety, uh, nice and clicky, and actually pretty easy to use. And then we have uh, a bolt hold open uh, right there, so the bolt doesn't hold open on a on a on an empty magazine. So what you got to do is pull back on the bolt and press that button in, let go of the bolt, and then it holds it open. Best things of all, uh, it does uh, auto open up, so you can just pull that bolt back and it'll allow the bolt forward. Now on Ruger 1022s, they still don't do that from the factory, which is kind of weird. Uh, we have a flush fit magazine on the bottom here. Now that flush fit magazine, that's great if you want to use this thing for apple seeds in the US, maple seeds in, in Canada, or positional shooting where you're shooting offhand and you want uh, uh, your flat palm shelf support hand uh, very close to the trigger. Very easy to do on this rifle because it does have that flat uh, bottom on here. That's also really nice for carrying in the woods because you can get really close to that, uh, that balance point on the rifle. And while I have complaints about the magazine, like it's got kind of this, uh, <laughs> this mixture of like uh, cheapness and goodness in it. So it's got like a, a pot metal back and it's got a plastic front and it's kind of like fused together cheapness and goodness. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of painful to load just because like you have to really like lever the uh, the rounds in there to uh, to load it up um, But it's not the worst there. Are, there are some other uh, 22 magazines that are worse than this I find the one thing that that a lot of 22 rifles uh, uh, Weak point is is the magazine the magazines on 22s are just awful um, This one's pretty bad, but it's better than a lot of the other ones and there's one thing I like about this magazine It goes in there fairly nicely um, and because it's kind of spring loaded, um, it works at any angle. So any angle you press that button, the magazine's coming out again on the 1022, that thing's got to be level when you press that magazine release. If you've got it tilted at an angle or anything, the mag doesn't come out. It doesn't come out at all. Whereas this guy, even if you're at an angle, the magazine is very easy to pop out. So that is kind of nice. The bolt handle on it is, uh, is, a, is small. It's not uh, extended or anything like that. So you could miss it if you go too fast. Um, but it is nice and smooth. It is not free rotating. It's actually uh, captured on the recoil spring guide there. Uh, and it's got a pretty smooth action on this thing. I really like uh, what they did with how long this is and how smooth the, uh, the action is on it. It feels really good shooting it. And uh, uh, youth will have no problem in charging this rifle. Now the top of the receiver is round. It is drilled and tapped for weaver bases. It'll take number 46s. Uh, 46 M will be matte. S will be stainless. And oh, there's one more. There's one more that's a gloss, I think, but whatever. The size 46 uh, weaver bases. Uh, we've got an adjustable rear sight at the back here. Um, just a standard unit. Uh, this is not like a, like one of the easy ones to adjust. This is more of like adjust it once and then don't adjust after that. Uh, I do like how, this is going to be hard to see, but uh, the rear notch actually has quite a bit of light on both sides uh, of the, uh, of the uh, post in front. 
so I actually like it. I like the uh, I like how thin the the front blade is, and how much space there is uh, for it to sit in that notch and see light on both sides. So that should uh, that, that's the way I prefer to see a, a sight picture on this thing. And then finally, we have a, a blade at the front and just a standard 22 target crown on the front. Now the trigger is adjustable. They include a little uh, adjustment tool in with the package, and it just fits through the bottom of the trigger guard into another hole. And Lucy goes lighter, and righty tighty goes tighter. And uh, you will need to have it struck out to be able to make your adjustments. And you just find where that little notch is. There it is. And then you tighten for more poundage and loosen for less. And at the least, uh, it will have, I just pulled at 312. Let me just pull again here. just at four pounds. So uh, the trigger's adjustable. Uh, it'll be right around three and a bit to four kind of thing as at the lightest. Now I found that um, with this trigger, uh, you do have the possibility of trigger freeze. Trigger freeze is when you think you've let go of the trigger all the way and you try pulling it again and it doesn't go. Uh, and the reason why is the trigger blade is actually quite heavy on this thing. So you pull the trigger, there's a trigger press. I'm just going to cycle it just as if it shot and I'm going to let go and you can, you can hear it. You can see I've let go of the main trigger all the way. Now I'm letting go of the blade. There it goes. And uh, it does that with very little resistance on the way back up. So it can be kind of, you can kind of be fooled into thinking that you've pulled the trigger all the way or let the trigger out all the way. And I feel, okay, I've got no, no weight on this thing left. And I go to pull it, and there's, there's nothing there. So you have to wait for that thing to click right back in. At least it's very clicky and tactile, though, so it's very easy to tell when that's going on. Now, one of the things I think this rifle does an excellent job of is just making it easy to get the bolt out. Uh, now, keep in mind, if your scope is really low, this trick might not work, uh, but don't do that. And then you can just, you can get the, the, the bolt out. I mean, the, the comb on this thing uh, is built for the iron sights. So you might need to add some cheek piece here anyways. So don't try to get your scope so low that it's going to, to get in the way of this because uh, this is a really nifty trick. Uh, it's got a pin in the back, just um, just like some of the AKs out there would, uh, would have. Uh, you push that pin in and then pull that plastic bit off. That's your uh, uh, dust cover. And then we're given access to this back area here. That has a recoil spring with a dog leg on it, just like an AK or a Type 81 or whatever you want to call it. Uh, while this might look like it's firing pin, this is just a guide rod and a, and a recoil spring there. Uh, next, what we're able to do is pull this all the way to the rear, pull the charging handle out. Charging handle has a little hole in it. That goes with that, uh, uh, that guide there. And then the bolt comes right out the back. So you can see it angles up a little bit there. So if your scope again comes down below this level, that's where you're not going to be able to pull the bolt out. And that, uh, that would really be a disadvantage because I think this rifle design is really neat. And I think the ability to get the bolt out is this quickly uh, with an Allen key or something pokey to get in there is, uh, is a pretty good uh, uh, feature. Now the bolt itself um, is kind of unique looking because it's, uh, it's, it's rectangular, <laughs> which isn't normally for how, uh, how these guns are set up, but uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, one thing that uh, I have heard from other Savage A22 owners is that the, uh, the pin that holds in the firing pin can sometimes shear. Now it looks like this one's got a solid pin. Uh, I believe there is a roll pin in here somewhere, or maybe that's the one that was replaced uh, with this newer style pin because that one was having problems with, uh, with shearing, and, and once that's sheared, boy, boy, you've got some problems with the with your bolt. But uh, um, that looks like it's been replaced by one that is easy to push out. Um, and, and the reason why you'd want to get to your bolt for a, a semi-auto 22 is that 22 LR is dirty, and you do need to clean your bolt face every once in a while. It's every few thousand rounds, that kind of thing. So very easy to do with the Savage A22. Now, uh, we don't need to take it down any further than this. We could clean the bolt off, give this stuff a swab, maybe clean out the ejection port a little bit just to get the, some of the crud out of there. Um, but if you want to take it down further, you can. Uh, we just need to take our 5, 30 seconds uh, Allen key, uh, which is pretty standard for Savage. We've got one Allen key in the uh, in the top here, just at the tang. And it's a short little guy. And then we also have one 
at the front, just where the magazine release goes. And it's a longer guy. Once those two action screws are out, we'll just need to take that safety and kind of schmiggle her into the middle there somewhere. And then we should be able to pull our barreled action apart from our stock. So not much going on inside the stock there. One cool thing that I think is, uh, is worth mentioning is look at this channel up at the front. The barrel channel has like a plastic sheath that goes in there just to kind of clean up the lines in there and make it look neater, which is kind of neat, I guess. When it comes to our barreled action, we have a plastic uh, unit housing our trigger, and then we have the uh, barrel itself. This is actually very easy. There's a little pin here. I'm just going to press in a little bit, and hopefully I can snag it from the other side. Oh, I can. Look at that. Uh, so there's that pin at the rear. With that pin out, this guy just pops right off. So there's that uh, that trigger assembly. Again, we can clean this off and, and give it a, a, a quick scrub. Um, but look at how easy, <laughs> look at the access we get to the inside of the receiver now. So this is going to be really easy to get some uh, uh, paper towel or, or rags or whatever and, and give this a wipe out or get access to that breech face and clean out where that extractor goes just to, uh, just to get that breech face nice and clean. Overall, I'm... Uh, I'm done this way faster than the Savage 64. <laughs> and actually, even, even this dis disassembly is so much better than most of the 22s on the market. Most of the semi-auto 22s are not that easy to disassemble. I took apart two screws and I pushed out one little pin and I'm fully disassembled here. So that is something special and something that, uh, that Savage has done really well on this rifle. So to reassemble, this is kind of hard for me to see because I've got some bright lights. I'm just going to schmiggle that guy in there. And there's this post at the back here has to fit in with a recess that's in that uh, that receiver there. There we go. I can feel it just went in. I'm just going to very carefully hold it just like that. I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to push it in from one side to the other. And now that's staying on there. One quick thing I want to show you just before I get too far. This thing's pillar bedded. So there's a metal sleeve going around the front and rear uh, holes where the action screws go in and the advantage to that is that you can torque them down once you hit steel it stops it stops where that uh, where that action screw goes so you you're not going to crush this plastic uh, because you're crushing metal and <laughs> that's kind of hard to do uh, and it allows you to get that torque on there without uh, doing any damage to it and uh, uh, without uh, giving some good consistency to it as well. So uh, let's go ahead and pop that back on there. If you run into any resistance, don't force it. You probably, your safety may, might need to be moved a little bit just so it can fit in between. Uh, and then just keep moving it until you hear it click into place. Then you can start uh, putting your screws back in. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that uh, action screw on the front. Next, I'm going to throw the action screw on the rear. That one does come with a little lock washer. Just chuck that onto the bolt and if it came off it for you even. And then secure it just behind the tang there. Grab your bolt, pop it back into its rectangular slot in the receiver there. Grab your charging handle. You'll want those holes aligned front to back when you're popping it in. Next up comes the recoil spring. It goes into that hole in the back of the bolt there. And just use that leg and put it on the shelf that's kind of in front where it can rest there. Finally, take your rear dust cover, put the tab underneath there. And I like to just kind of put a little bit lower, push that pin a bit and then snap it in place. And you should be able to visually verify that that plastic pl pin is in place on the dust cover. So uh, that this is <laughs> this is way faster than a lot of other guns I try to do. Uh, finally, make sure that your chamber is empty. Test, test it for functionality. So check that the bolt hold open works. Check that the safety works. I can see that, yeah, the safety is working. Safety's off and the trigger fires. I hold the trigger down. I pull it back. I check for reset. Reset works, and the trigger works as well. So uh, we are back to functional on this rifle. I think I've been pretty positive about this rifle, and that's because I think it's got some really good things built into it. I think the uh, the design of taking it down, very, very nice. I think the cycling on it's really good. I think the trigger's a little bit weird, but you can get used to it. That's fine. I think the feel of it being a more adult-sized rifle is really nice. 
Uh, so it's, it, it's really got a lot of things going for it. And even though the mag is cheap and it's not a drop-free mag where you, where you can uh, drop it free, I think the uh, Remington 597 has a really nice uh, button that you hit and the magazine drops out of it. I think this is, is just fine because it pops out so positively and because it pops out from any angle and because it's just very easy to grab the magazine as it pops out and falls into your hand. So I think that is, uh, is just fine. Uh, they also have 25 round mags for this. So if you wanted to run a stick mag, they come with that. Some, there's actually some package uh, deals where you get the 10 rounder, the magazine, uh, the, the uh, scope bases and the stick mag with it as well. So should you get a Savage A22? Well, there's a couple of like really big positives to this thing. Disassembly is really good. Uh, cycling is really nice. The trigger is all right if you get used to the uh, uh, the resets on it. Uh, the accuracy out of it was really good. The accuracy I got out of this thing was fantastic. Exactly what I'd want in a, in a semi-automatic 22. Uh, so I think for some adults that are uh, that are getting back into uh, 22 shooting, whether it be action shooting or they've got uh, uh, at their range like a local 100 yard uh, shoot kind of a thing for 22s, uh, I think this rifle is really, really well placed for that. I think for the price, uh, with this one, I believe it was around 260, 275, somewhere around there, Canadian. Uh, it uh, the, the price point is very competitive with Ruger's out there. And I think there's a couple of things that this rifle is doing better than Ruger. The controls are nicer. Uh, the disassembly is a lot nicer. The trigger's pretty good. Um, and the feel of the of the rifle is also very good because again, it's a it's a full size rifle. Um, I think all those things are really good. I think the places where they could use uh, uh, some improvements, um, this 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 assembly, could use just a little bit of refinement. That little plastic dog leg thing, I've heard of a couple of people who have broken it, and then uh, it doesn't really work all that great as a, as a disassembly method. Uh, so that's one thing that might come up. The uh, pin that I talked about in the bolt, but l it looks like it's been fixed, uh, that's another one. Um, but other than that, this is a fantastic rifle for the price and, uh, and for what you're getting. So um, I would really recommend one of these. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.